Dit is papa Alfa 0, ik hoor Tingo. Ik hoor voor de Daily Minutes met een nieuwsupdate van vandaag. Oh jee, ga maar nu al verspreken. Het is 10 september 2016. Dus het beurt van zaterdag. As always in weekends, our broadcast will be in English. But we will first start with a small announcement in Dutch. Of course, we do have Morse code and an image in PD90 as a TV. Vanwege de ballonvorsjacht is er morgen geen herhaling van de uitzending van vanavond via pi 2 nos we maken uiteraard graag even plaats voor een groot evenement als de Ballonvossenjacht morgen. Je kunt de Daily Minutes echter wel om half elf beluisteren via PI1XDV-L op Echolink, PI1XDV-L. En via het internet radiostation Shorties FM op fm.shorties.nl, fm.shorties.nl. Dat laatste werkt ook op smartphones door een van de URL's aan te klikken. Ik wil verder natuurlijk iedereen een heel fijne ballonvossenjacht toewensen. Wees voorzichtig op de weg en veel luisterplezier. Today we will start with the propagation news as always on Saturdays. And after that we have some news. Hello, this is Bob McCready, GK0 FGX with the TX Talk podcast of the GB2 RS News from the Radio Society of Great Britain. Now the radio propagation report compiled by Golf 0 Kilo Yankee Alpha, Golf 3 Yankee Lima Alpha and Golf 4 Bravo Alpha Oscar on Friday the 9th of September. Last weekend saw very unsettled geomagnetic conditions due to a large coronal hole across the sun's equator. This impacted SSB field day with the K-index being pushed as high as 4 and 5, sparking visible auroras at high latitudes and depressed maximum usable frequencies. The solar flux index hung tantalisingly close to 100 during the week, but couldn't quite make it. The good news is that better autumnal conditions are beginning to show with the noon daytime critical frequency as measured by the Chiltern Ionosond exceeding 5.6 megahertz on Wednesday. This indicated a maximum usable frequency of up to 21 megahertz on longer paths. There have also been some late season sporadic E openings on 10 meters, giving weak but usable short 28 megahertz skip to the south of France and Spain. Next week, the USAF predicts the solar flux index will start at around 90, decline slightly and then peak at more than 100 next weekend. The extreme ultraviolet image from the SDO spacecraft on Thursday showed no Earth-facing coronal holes, so, fingers crossed, we may have more settled conditions this week. NOAA, however, does predict a K-index of 4 on Tuesday the 13th. Mid-September often marks the start of better HF conditions, so if you've been put off over the last few months, now may be the time to switch on the radio. And now the VHF and up propagation news. We've had some very good tropo, including a GM2 EA8 contact last week, and we start the coming week in a similar vein with a brief cooling off period. It seems that although high pressure will be nearby over the continent for the start of the week, the unsettled weather over Scotland and Ireland will edge southeast as the days pass. Even so, there may still be high pressure near to southern areas and over Biscay to offer paths towards Spain and Portugal for stations in the west. Heading into autumn, we usually hit the key time for overnight and early morning mist and fog. These conditions are perfect for tropo, so make use of the visual clues and you'll get some more new squares into the log. The moon is at minimum declination on the 11th, so EME moon windows will start to lengthen and losses will fall to minimum at perigree on the 18th. The Orionids meteor shower continues with no large peaks into November, so continue to look out for enhanced meteor scatter conditions this coming week. And that's all for this week from the Propagation team. Eight British competitors attended the ARDF World Championships in Bulgaria in the name of the RSGB. The national anthem sounded at the awards ceremony for day two of the championships. David Williams, Mike Three, Whiskey Delta Delta took the gold medal in the men's 50-year-plus age group sprint race. This is only the second gold medal won at a World Championships by an RSGB member, and the RSGB would like to add its congratulations to David and thank him and the other competitors for their efforts. Following on from the successful ARIWS contacts carried out during the Tim Peake Principia mission to the International Space Station, scores from across Europe are being invited to submit applications to be part of the ARIS program for September 2017 to January 2018. As so clearly demonstrated by the UK contacts, schools extensively benefit from a direct contact where a full amateur radio ground station is established at the school and used in the contact with the astronaut on the ISS. And of course, if you have a look at episode 11 of TX Factor, you will be able to see a full record of one of those particular contacts with the King School in Ottery St Mary.
Now, this is the preferred approach within the UK and to assist schools, the AMSAT UK ARIS UK operations team have a fully portable satellite station that can be used as part of the contact, which you can see in that TX Factor episode. And that allows schools to concentrate on the educational aspects of how a contact can inspire students rather than having to worry about the technicalities. Kieran Morgan, Mike Zero, X-Ray Tango Delta, is the RSGB representative to ARIS as well as the UK operations coordinator and is available to give advice and support to those planning an application. Early interaction with Kieran can help avoid many of the pitfalls of ARIS's selection process. The deadline for applications is November 2016, with the uh, selection of the successful schools being made in December. So I think it doesn't say a date here, so I'm assuming that's the end of November 2016. Anyway, if you're interested in putting in an application, contact Kieran as soon as possible. His email address is kieran.morgan, M-O-R-G-A-N, at rsgb.org.uk. That's Kieran, C-I-A-R-A-N, dot morgan at rsgb.org.uk. The annual RSGB construction competition is to encourage home construction, experimentation, design and innovation. Any member of the RSGB or group of members is eligible to enter. The closing date for entries is the 30th of September and judging will take place at the RSGB convention. This year, the competition is being sponsored by Martin Lynch and Sons with prizes of £50 worth of vouchers for each category winner and £100 for the winner of the prestigious Pat Hawker G3VA trophy that will be awarded to the best overall entry. See the RSGB website for full details of the various categories where you will also find an entry form. Free and unbureaucratic short-term cross-border amateur radio operation is set to be expanded to more countries outside Europe. Non-CEPT countries can now join the framework of the CEPT licence and the CEPT novice licence in a much simplified process, thanks to an initiative of IARU Region 1 to change the relevant recommendations. Full details of these changes can be read at iaru-r1.org. iaru-r1.org. The Grimsby UHF FM repeater Golf Bravo 7 Golf Bravo Yankee, operated by the Grimsby Amateur Radio Society for the last 30 years, was turned off at the end of August. It was removed because the multi-storey flats where it was sited are due to be demolished next year. The new licence for a site in Cleethorpes is awaited. The new NOV holder is Dave Mike Zero Kilo Whiskey Kilo. If you have D-Star in North East Lincolnshire, why not try the new D-Star repeater Golf Bravo 7 Golf Charlie whilst Golf Bravo 7 and Golf Yankee is off the air.
Daily Minutes zijn dagelijks vanaf ongeveer 1900 uur te beluisteren via PI2NOS. De uitzending wordt een dag later om half elf ochtends herhaald.